Hello everyone, I'm an experimenter in the Histochemical Detection Department of Wuhan Boaster Biological Engineering Co. Limited. Immunohistochemistry is a commonly used technique in pathology to display the presence, location, and content changes of proteins by color. Pathological experiments seem to be easy, but it takes a long time to accumulate and explore experience if you really want to do it well. Next, I will share with you my practical experience over the years. First, let's take a look at what a complete histochemical experiment process is like. It can be roughly divided into 10 steps. Sample fixation, sectioning, dewaxing to water, inactivation, antigen retrieval, blocking, primary antibody incubation, secondary antibody incubation, color development, counter staining, sealing. These are our booster products, used in every step of the immunohistochemistry experiment. Next, I will take booster PCNA product number BM0104 as an example, and demonstrate it on the spot according to the above histochemical experimental process. Step 1. Slice. This is the anti-detachment slide that needs to be used in the sectioning process. Paraffin section thickness, 5 microns. After the tissue is flattened at 40 degrees Celsius, the slides are removed. Bake for 30 minutes in the oven at 60 degrees Celsius. Precautions. For tissues that are easy to peel off, such as bone or skin, the baking time can be appropriately extended. Step 2. Dewaxing to water. The purpose is to de-paraffinize the tissue, to hydrate the tissue, and facilitate incubation. Xylene dewaxing 3 tanks. 10 minutes per tank, 100%, 85%, 70% alcohol. Soak for 10 minutes each. Wash with water. Avoid water directly rinsing the tissue. Precautions. The specific time needs to be flexibly adjusted according to the room temperature and the freshness of the xylene. The higher the room temperature, the fresher the xylene, and the shorter the corresponding soaking time if there's no punctate paraffin residue on the tissue. Step 3. Inactivation. The purpose is to inactivate endogenous peroxidase and to reduce the interference of endogenous peroxidase on the chromogenic system. This is the endogenous peroxidase blocking solution used in the inactivation process. Add one drop of endogenous peroxidase blocking solution. Incubate at room temperature for 10 minutes. Washed with PBS buffer three times. Five minutes each time. Precautions. For tissues with endogenous peroxidase content, the incubation time should be appropriately extended or the concentration of hydrogen peroxide should be increased. Step 4. Antigen Retrieval The purpose is to expose the binding epitope of the target protein. This is the EDTA and citric acid retrieval solution that needs to be used in the antigen retrieval process. EDTA microwave heat retrieval for 5 to 8 minutes cool to room temperature. Precautions. For most proteins, EDTA retrieval solution generally gives satisfactory results. A traditional citrate retrieval solution can also be used. If the sample is fixed for too long or the positive expression is not strong, the number and intensity of retrieval can be appropriately increased. Step 5. Blocking. The purpose is to block nonspecific binding sites. This is the immunohistochemical pen that needs to be used in the blocking step. Immunohistochemistry stroke circle to prevent reagent outflow. Add one drop of blocking serum. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Step 6. Primary antibody incubation. Add one drop of primary antibody. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 1 to 2 hours. Wash three times with PBS buffer, five minutes each time. Precautions. For the first experiment, it's recommended to do a concentration gradient of the primary antibody to determine the optimal dilution ratio of the primary antibody. Step seven, secondary antibody incubation. This is the secondary antibody product that needs to be used in the incubation of the secondary antibody, HRP, labeled goat anti-rabbit. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Wash three times with PBS buffer. 
five minutes each time. Precautions The type of secondary antibody is determined according to the species of the primary antibody. For example, the primary antibody is rabbit antibody, and the secondary antibody is HRP, labeled goat anti-rabbit, IgG. Step 8. Color Development This is the DAB color developing solution that needs to be used in the color development process. Prepare DAB, 1 milliliter B solution, plus 1 drop A solution. Mix well. Add 1 drop of DAB chromogenic solution. Observe under the microscope. Control the color development time termination reaction. Wash. Leave the slide to dry. Step 9. Counter staining. This is the hematoxylin staining solution that needs to be used in the color development process. Hematoxylin counter stain for 40 seconds. Use distilled water to wash. Soak in blue solution for one minute. Wash again. Final step, cover slip. This is the mounting medium that needs to be used in the mounting process. 70%, 85%, 100% alcohol gradient dehydration. Three minutes per tank. Xylene clear, three cylinders, two minutes per cylinder. After drying, seal the film with neutral resin. Observe the experimental results and take pictures. That's it for the immunohistochemistry experiment. If you want to get more experimental tutorials, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.